Hello. Uh, all right, so I'm going to give you a recap on how things went in September. Um, I didn't necessarily complete the books that I planned on completing, but I did better than I've been doing um, in August. So I feel like progress, right? Um, so yeah, I'll just go through the ones I did read. There were two that I was like planning to read that were on my TBR that I did read. And then I read um, six that were not on my TBR. So um, I will go through the ones I read. All right. So I read um, Driving Blind, which is a collection of short stories, a newer one by Ray Bradbury, um, part of the bookish drummers, Ray Bradbury Book Club. Um, I didn't really like necessarily anything in this. Um, I just, it was fine. I mean, you know, the thing with Ray Bradbury is like, I love his writing. Um, this wasn't as strong as a lot of his stuff. I mean, again, it's, I feel like when, you know, like, it's kind of like what's going on with like Stephen King, you know, the more short story collections you write, the I feel like they get diluted, right? Because when you, they had their first short story collection. So, I mean, Bradbury was obviously a short story writer. Um, and the first few collections, obviously, are collecting his best stuff, stuff that was getting published in magazines. Same with, um, you know, Stephen King, because people still were publishing short stories, you know, frequently. Um, but, you know, when they've been around for a long time, by like, you know, 20 years into their career, their short story collections are either going to have repeats of stories you haven't read before, every so often a new one that's actually good, and then a lot of the crap that, like, didn't make other collections and had maybe has been revamped a bit, but so, you know, it was fine, but it's obviously not his stronger work. So, I mean, I liked it. I'm not a short story person anyway. I mean, Bradbury, um, Stephen King, and it used to be Neil Gaiman, but obviously for other reasons, that's not going to continue. Um, but those were always like the writers. I liked their short stories. Um, and then I love like certain short stories, you know, like I love the lottery and most dangerous game and, um, a lot of like just the classic short stories, Rose for Emily. Um, actually Hemingway writes really good short stories as well. Um, but you know, when it comes to short stories, I tend to prefer sort of broader collections, you know, Best American Short Stories or something. There are very few writers that I can read an entire collection of short stories by um, just because I don't like the medium that much. You know, it's, I always feel like, I think I've said this in other videos, it's like, I feel like if I love the story, I just wish it was longer. And if I don't like the story, I don't care. And so, I mean, I'm glad it's short, but I'm just still not invested in it regardless. And so it's very, very, you know, hard for me to get super excited about a short story collection. So, I mean, it was fine. It was Bradbury, so I read it, but um, definitely not as good as his other stuff, you know, but I'm glad I read it. So then I finally finished a slow fire burning. I kept going back and forth because it would kept getting, had to be renewed at the library, but then I had to put it back on hold and then we had a readathon. And so I finally did finish it. And and, you know, and part of part of my sort of like middle of the road feeling about it, it has to do with that, I'm sure. You know, I feel like if I had read it in a week, you know, like I would normally read a book like this, um, I would have probably enjoyed it more. But, you know, coming back to it and then having months off. So I did like it. Um, I mean, obviously, A Girl on the Train is my favorite of hers. Um you know, and again, I don't know, like, if I reread that, would I feel the same way, you know, because at the time, it was very, like, different, but now I've read a million books kind of like it, um, so I don't know, like, would I still like that as, like, would I have that high, as high on my list, or would I just think she was, like, an okay thriller writer, um, I did like the second one, I can't remember the name right now, um, and I finally finished this one, and again, it was good, I just, you know, I, I wasn't, like, blown away. Um, I w didn't hate it or anything, but it was, you know, middle of the road. So enjoyed it. Um, probably should have, like I said, I, I, it wasn't like boring. It was just cause I had to keep returning it. Um, and, and then I couldn't use it in my readathon because I had already started it. And so, um, it just took me a few months. So I think I probably would have liked it a little bit more if I hadn't read it that way, but, um, you know, I definitely didn't dislike it, but you know, wasn't like a favorite or anything either. And then I randomly read um, this Dungeon Master um, book of RPG trivia, which was just kind of fun um, for my husband and I 
just to do RPG trivia. And if you like RPGs, this was pretty cool because it had obviously a lot of D&D stuff, but it also had like video game RPG trivia and then just like general RPG trivia and like um, about like the history, but also about like um, pop culture and stuff. So I really thought it was good. Um, I had gotten an arc of this. And so, um, yeah, I definitely would recommend it if you're into RPGs. It's, it's probably a great gift too, you know, as we're getting into gift season. Um, then I read um, a collection of poetry, which was called Night Sky with Exit Wounds. And I got to be honest, I literally just loved the title um, of this book so much that I finally was like, I'm going to read the poetry. And it was fine. Um, you know, when it comes to poetry, I'm very, very like, I don't want to say traditional, but I love I love, like, the old school poets that I love, and then, like, I don't get that into newer poetry. I don't mind it. Poetry is, you know, an absolute love of mine, but it's it's kind of like short story collections. Like, eventually the poems all start to feel the same, and so I tend to, when I'm going to read poetry, I'd rather read just, like, one poem. Someone's like, hey, this poem's really good. Or read, you know, a collection of poems on, like, a theme or something, or just a random gathering of poems. Um because, you know, people have obviously their own idiosyncrasies and styles. And um, with the exception of like a few of my absolute favorite poets who I can like read any of their poems, I just start to feel like they all kind of run into each other. Um, but, you know, I mean, I didn't think the poetry was bad or anything. Um, it was good. And the title is just so fantastic. Um, and then I read The September House and I absolutely loved this. Um, this is an example of like the kind of horror I like, which is kind of I mean obviously it's got like sort of a gothic element which I really love and then it was a little snarky but it didn't like sacrifice the f horror elements or the like rest of the story to be funny um you know I know people really like Grady Hendrix I never have but a lot of people I have heard say like is so focused on being funny that like it it's not scary at all and so I like I haven't read them but that might be my experience too because it's very hard I think to pull off horror comedy and I love horror comedy but I feel like a lot of times it's just it's just comedy um or it's more of a comedy than a horror which is fine but then I would just say it's a comedy you know and same with like movies like horror comedy movies are very hard to find because they're either just really funny but you're not scared because it's like slapstick almost or it's scary but the humor really isn't there or it feels out of place um but like cabin in the woods is a really good example super super funny um but actually creepy too so like when you can pull that off i just think it's fantastic i mean then you have like tucker and dale versus evil which is pretty much just a straight comedy but it's more of like a tongue-in-cheek kind of like satire of horror movies and so i did really enjoy that but anyway back to september house um so it has a little like the narrator's voice is funny but it's not like ha ha funny you know like i mean there's definitely horror elements going on here she just her kind of personality is like well what are you gonna do and I kind of like that because there's also sort of this underlying um, sort of social side of the story. And I think it does a really good job of talking about like domestic violence and domestic abuse in a way that's like, you know, for people who don't understand like why someone stays in an abusive relationship I thought it did a really good job of sort of telling you and explaining it to you using this like possessed house almost as a metaphor for that. But also like even if you don't care about that, it, the possessed house story is good. Um, so that was what I really liked about it. And it turns out I was looking, you know, her bio, she is apparently a clinical psychologist. And I was like, well, you can tell like she actually seems to understand trauma and Sometimes, you know, people are like, oh, we wrote about psychology. And I'm like, have you ever talked to a person, you know, with actual like trauma or um, and I get very frustrated. And when the other thing is like she doesn't make it like condescending or preachy either. So I really, really liked this. And this is this is the kind of horror I like. And I'm always like, oh, yeah, I love horror, but I have very few horror books that I've enjoyed. And the reason is, like, the type of horror I like is this. I love, I'm thinking of ending things. Um, 
Last House on Needless Street. I like like some classic horror, um, you know, like Shirley Jackson kind of stuff. I like like gothic, so like Rebecca. So it's not exactly like I don't like a lot of unnecessarily gory things. Like I'm just like, why why? Or, you know, like I do like some Stephen King, um, but I don't like a lot of supernatural stuff. So it's very hard for me to find horror that I just I connect to because the supernatural oftentimes makes me go. Eh, it's a little too out there. I can't like find any, it's not rooted enough in reality. And I just, I'm not scared of things that are like nonsense. And then um, when it comes to like serial killers, that stuff scares me. But like, even then, like it needs to be actually creepy, not just kind of like procedural, which I do enjoy, but I don't find it horror. I would say it's, you know, police procedural. So so yeah, I'm very limited <laughs> in my horror choices, but I, I thought this was fantastic. And so if you like the kind of horror I like, that like psychological, sometimes metaphorical, kind of slow burn stuff, like you'd probably really like it. If you're not into that, you know, if you like straightforward, pretty, you know, traditional horror, it might not be for you. Uh, then I read Daughter of Mine by Megan Miranda. And the thing is, I really loved like Megan Miranda's books for a while. I was like super into them. And then uh, now I'm starting to feel like they're all the same story. And, um, you know, maybe this one just wasn't that good or, you know, but this one I felt like was, I've seen all of the elements of this book in like other ones of her books. And I was just like, I don't care. I've done this before. So I was really disappointed. But again, you know, this is what happens when you read a lot by somebody and they have a lot of books. So it's kind of why I love like, you know, Jillian Flynn, and, like, she's got, like, three books, right, <laughs> and so I kind of would rather have a writer just, like, not worry about, oh, I gotta get my one or two books out a year, like, just write a book that's good, and then maybe there's a couple years in between them, um, like, Catriona Awards like that, you know, and I think when you have a distinct style, I mean, hers isn't, like, ridiculously distinct or anything, but it starts to be, like, okay, you have 20 bucks and they're all the same story, you know? And so I was disappointed. I mean, I'm not going to like write her off. I like, I have some of her other books I haven't read yet. And I have really enjoyed some of her books. So I think, um, you know, maybe just this one didn't work for me. Um, all right. Then I read, um, I had gotten an arc of the complete first volume of Beneath the Trees where nobody sees. And I had been like debating on reading this comic and then you know, I was just kind of like, eh, it's, I don't think it's my thing. Um, I don't know why I did that because honestly, it was fantastic. So it's this like really cute, anthropomorphic, very pastel, pretty um, imagery, but it's actually like super violent and twisted. And I, I loved it. It was so fantastic. I really hope there's another volume of it. Um, it's pretty much a complete arc. So, I mean, there's plenty more you could do, but it's not like you're left hanging if, you know, if there isn't any more. Um, but I'm like, now I've, I'm like, I gotta go get the, uh, the, the six or eight, um, issues. I gotta go get them like in comic form. So I can add them to my collection because this was absolutely exceptional. Um, so if you like, if you like horror comics, if you like horror um, if you like comics, like, I cannot recommend this enough. It's so good. Um, and it's, like, it's not cute. Like, it's pretty and cute, like, in the imagery. But, like, even some of the imagery is super dark. Like, there's, like, violent murder and, like, it's... But it was great. It was just such a good story. Uh, really into it. Really, really liked it. Um, and then I read what I think is one of my favorite books of the year. Um, and this is 13 Ways of Looking at a Fat Girl by Mona Awad. I, when I read Bunny, I just could not believe how good it was. And then I went and read Rouge and I was like, I don't even think I know what's going on, but I love her writing style. And I had asked for All's Well for Christmas. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go try to track more of her stuff down. Her writing is so good. And this one, this was very different than Bunny and Rouge. It's not really weird. It's just like, contemporary stories and it is I would say it's short stories it's not really it's 13 vignettes but they're all about the same character and they're just like progressive so um it's not like a straightforward narrative like this happens this happens beginning to end it's like this happens and then years pass here's another s situation happening um but it does follow this girl through like high school all the way through you know her adulthood and it looks at, you know, so she starts out um, fat and then as she, 
you know, feels bad about herself. She ends up deciding to lose weight. She loses weight. And then she still has like all of these like struggles. And it's, it was so good. I have like never felt so seen in a book. And so I read some of the reviews and there's a lot of bad reviews and they're saying it's fat phobic. It's not, um, you know, everyone's sick of, oh, the fat girl's sad because she's fat. And like the only good thing in her life is to lose weight. And I mean, I get that, you know, I agree you shouldn't be fat phobic, but I also think you need to be realistic. Like if somebody is overweight, like that is for a lot of girls, they're on their mind, you know, their weight is a major thing for them because I mean, there is so much research about how you are perceived based on weight and, You know, women who've lost a significant amount of weight talk about how it's easier to find jobs, how the dating experience has changed, or women who've gained a lot of weight, same thing. You know, they can't find work. Um, They're having a hard time in the dating world. And, um, you know, even going into stores, like the clothes don't fit right. It's, it's It's hell. And so, and I've had, you know, struggles with my weight forever. And I mean, I'm a girl. So I feel like even when I was like, young, younger and my weight was like fine. It never felt fine. Um, and you know, I think especially, I mean, part of the thing is this is also set in the nineties. So, um, you know, that might have part to do with it too, because, you know, I do think we are trying more, you know, socially to kind of be like, everybody, you know, should learn to accept their bodies because there's so, you know, such a high rate of eating disorders. But I mean, again, you look at social media, it's not necessarily working. I mean, we're trying, we're trying to communicate that it's okay. But I don't think Mona Wad's like communicating that like, you have to be thin, like, because even once the character loses weight, she is like miserable more than she was when she wasn't, you know, when she was overweight. So there's a lot, like, it's a lot of it's about the psychology and, you know, the pressures. And in this case, her her mom was part of the issue. Um, you know, she had some, like, horrible experiences when she was, like, first dating, the way men, like, kind of treated her and used her and, you know, the sort of um, fetish, fetishism of, you know, fat. Um, and I, it was just so good. Like, honestly, this is one of the best things I've ever read. Um, and like I said, I don't think there was one, one like vignette that I was, I was like, I cannot explain that. I feel like she has gone into my brain and has like told part of like my experience. Um, and it was like in her college years and it was just so good. And again, maybe that's why I loved it so much because I just felt so, it was so relatable. Um, You know, and if, I mean, if contemporary stories about, you know, girls going through like their, you know, whatever shit is going on in their lives and how they are handling it emotionally is not your thing, it's not going to be your thing. You know, so if you read Bunny and you read Rouge or All's Well and you're like, oh, I love her, like weird kind of social horror satire stuff this is not going to be for you. Like this is, I mean, the same in terms of like her commentary about like how women are treated and sort of like the social stuff. Yeah, that's there, but this is not horror. This is very traditional contemporary, a girl thinking about her feelings. And I mean, that is like my, that's my jam. You know, that's my favorite thing in the world. Um, Like, I would love, like, I love nothing more than literally no plot, just a girl talking about how she feels and feeling things, Um, you know, assuming they're things I feel and have felt at points in my life. So um, that's pretty much obviously was going to work for me. And, you know, again, I've had issues with my weight. I was growing up in the 90s, you know, so it's very, very relevant for me. Um, But I mean, if that sounds interesting to you, honestly, it was the writing, everything about it, just absolutely fantastic. I could not put this down. I loved this so much. Um, So even though I didn't read as much as I wanted and I didn't necessarily read all the books I intended to, I did get like partway through some things. And again, they had to be returned or I started a new um, readathon for the month. So I have to go back to them. But um, I still feel like I did a pretty good job. So um, yeah, I will be back in October and Sir Chunk is still working on his. We're just kind of slowly adding things as he reads more things and eventually he'll just be like, here's like five months of things I've read. So, um, you know, he's reading really slow right now, so it's not going to be like a billion books. But um, yeah, he should be getting this done at some point, I hope. Um, 
but yeah, we'll be back in a bit and hopefully, you know, we may think of some other things. We have all these ideas and then we just haven't really had the time to, um, to be doing much. Um, I literally worked for 26 straight hours earlier this week and with like one hour to eat and it was a nightmare. And like, I feel like my job is so frustrating because I'll go like two weeks when literally nothing is happening and then all of a sudden I have so much work I can't sleep I'm not I have like no time so that's where I'm at right now I'm in that phase and so I'm kind of hoping it slows down I'm trying to like kind of step back from some projects and see if I can get it to slow down a bit but we'll see um so that's where things are at I should be um hopefully having some more things coming out soon though all right. Hope you all had a good September and are enjoying spooky season and October and we'll be back soon. Bye.